another very popular detector uh, descriptor called HOG, which will call the strong gradient oriented gradients, and this has been used a lot in the human detection. So the <coughs> idea here is that um, we will also compute the gradient orientation and gradient direct uh, magnitude, and you will see this everywhere that you know the, as I've said the basic operations are that given an image we want to compute the change in x and change in y and the vector we look at the magnitude we look at direction and we are going to operate on that um, so um, then we um, will we will do these you know if it's a color image then we can take it you know the um, one of the channel and mostly it's a black and white image now um, this will look at the image of the 64 by 128 and this does not actually detect the interest point it's just given a page given an image 64 by 128 it will come with a descriptor um, as compared to SIFT where we were detecting the interest point which is a local descriptor here it's in a way global descriptor okay so um, what we are going to do we'll divide the six, uh, 64 by 128 um, image into 16 by 16 blocks with 50 percent overlap and I'll, I'm going to show you how we do that and so therefore there will be 7 by 15 uh, blocks total of 105 of these cells or blocks in this 64 by 128 image. Then each block uh, will consist of two by two cells um, and the size will be 8 by 8 and then we are going to again quantize the ori gradient orientation. Now here they do in nine directions in the shift as we just talked about be, they did it for eight. So um, then again we can count the subwards or we can count depending on the gradient magnitude how strong is that particular gradient direction we count using the gradient magnitude um, and in some cases when the direction is not one of the bins then we can do the interpolation and I'll, I'll show you the example um, then in this case also we can apply Gaussian to smooth the histogram and then we'll go and concatenate all these descriptors because we have 105 of these blocks and each one is nine dimensional so it will give you very large descriptor about 3780 dimension descriptor and that's for the whole image uh, or the block in the image so here is the standard things that you know we compute the derivative um, the center difference as we have been talking about um, and these are the you know typical mass this is the x derivative this is the y derivative and once we know these x and y derivative we can compute gradient uh, the magnitude and gradient orientation you know that's uh, we have covered this many times so say so let's say this is the 64 by 128 image and we divide these in these um, cells and then um, so we will take a block which will be a 2 by 2 from these cells so there will be a first block then next block will be a 50 percent overlap will be block like that and so on so we have uh, <coughs> 16 by 16 blocks each block is 16 by 16 and um, then as you see that we will have seven blocks in this direction you know first block here second blocks here third block here fourth fifth sixth and seven block and here we will have 15 blocks you know first block here then second block will start here third fourth fifth and you count them be 15 of those so now each block is two by two um, so therefore since the 16 by 16 each block will be eight by eight and um, so the, here's the example that how we are going to do the interpo inter interpolation to um, find the better histograms so we have these bins nine bins and we are dividing this 
into these degrees which we have shown here, you know, 20, 40, 60, and so on. Uh, we have 360 degrees. And let's say we have an example of, um, say, um, the um, <coughs> Um, 85 degrees which is shown here now since we don't have a bin with 85 degrees so we need to split this in a couple of bins which are closest to that um, and um, the um, in this case uh, this is closer to one bin which is the 70 degrees other bin which is 90 degrees okay so we are going to and the difference between 70 and 85 is 15 and the uh, 90 is 5 so we are going to proportionally divide this you know 5 upon 20 and 15 upon 20 so we'll give 1 fourth here 3 fourth here we will distribute in the histogram because that will be kind of a fair share that each bin will get as compared to we could have done it say well since 85 we can truncate it say 90 um, we can just put the votes all in 90 or we can just put the vote into 70 but this will have the share uh, opportunity equal opportunity to these both cells which are close to that and that's what you know you can get a better histogram so um, then again you know we can weight the votes depending on the in magnitude because all these things we are doing is we are looking at direction. We take the direction, we quantize it, we get a histogram and so on. So if you don't use a gradient magnitude then each regardless of how strong is the gradient magnitude we just have one vote. But now we can vote it according to gradient magnitude. If some, are, some particular age uh, gradient direction is um, more stronger then we will have more weight to that if the other age is uh, weaker, uh, then we will have less votes. We can normalize the votes from zero to one and so on. So, and, and we can also smooth again, all, you know, that step as we've been talking about. So that is the HOGs. Again, a very popular descriptor, it's used a lot of places, in particular the human detection. And it is a kind of global descriptor, which uh, looks at the whole, um, uh, image, you know, the typical size of the person and um, the final feature vector will be, we'll concatenate all those 105 uh, histograms. We have um, each one is nine dimension will become 3780 dimension feature vector. So here's examples of the human and um, <coughs> we showed you these, you know, blocks and each block show you the histogram. And as you see, the and some of these blocks which are correspond say the arm of a person. So it show you the dominant direction of an age because you know this arm is like this. So the maximum um, peak in these histograms are according to the age here. And similarly here in this person, you see that these blocks give you the dominant direction of that particular block because we are looking at the histogram, say so in this block, what is the dominant in direction? And that gives you that, and it's a nice visualization. You can look at this representation, you can see it actually represents a human. Uh, and, and that is what is used to detect humans. So once you have this descriptor, you take lots of examples of humans and just train a support vector machine. We are going to talk about that. Machine learning thing during training you separate the humans from non-humans, you have positive examples, negative examples, and when you have testing, you again take the this um, uh, window and get these 105 blocks, get a histogram, concatenate, get this 3,000 dimensional feature vector, and go to the SVM, say the blocks are positive or blocks are negative, then it's positive, you say that's a human, okay? So that is the one um, descriptor which has become again very popular and actually people uh, use the HOG instead of SIFT descriptor uh, because as I told you the SIFT is, uh, has a patent. So if somebody wants to use uh, for commercial purposes they have to pay the money. 
So as you see here that this has lots of similarity with the SIF descriptor. Because SIF descriptor we were again computing the gradient orientation, we were going to histograms and we were you know concatenate them so they are very similar. Uh, of course this is more global but we can use a similar idea and make it local you know and that's what people people do. Um, so in a shift descriptor we were dividing in four by four so you have 16 histograms and here actually we have 105 histograms because each one is divided in a smaller block and of course the window here is bigger uh, there the window was uh, 16 by 16 okay so so these will be the typical images where this method will work so it will detect say well there's a human there's a human there's a human and so on in some cases when there's occlusion it will have some problem but um, this has um, become very popular to use HOG as a descriptor um, of course there are um, better method um, for human detection uh, as you see here, we are looking at the human as a whole one thing. Now humans have different parts of the body, you know, there's an arm, there's a leg, there's a head and so on. So the new methods which are called the deformable part model, DPM, uh, which works better. Uh, <clears throat> and some of the students here have been using that uh, uh, kind of model. Um, but in that also the descriptor is HOG descriptor is the histogram of gradient orientation. So um, then there you will detect the part separately and then you impose the constraint that these parts have to be um, um, fit into uh, the global window of human. So that's we say well if this is a left leg, this is right leg and this is a head and so on. How much a distance from these different parts to the, to the say tarso is and what's a deformation and that's what's called deformable part model. So you apply that to find the optimal deformation so that these parts are there and the parts they fit into and then take human. So the, the methods uh, deformable part model uh, method works better than its original method um, by you know Dalal and Triggs. So in this, they propose the descriptor, which is good, and then their uh, recognition or uh, detection was pretty simple as SVM. But these guys later, uh, the new work, DPM people, they say, well, having just one descriptor for the whole image, a uh, whole person is not good enough because there can be occlusion, there can be you know some problems. So let's look at the parts detect the parts and then combine these parts to detect the human and the question is that what should be the deformity you know the part this right arm can be here in some cases this posture it can be here so there is a one distance from here to the torso another distance from torso to hand you know uh, to the hand so that is um, um, the interesting area of research uh, in you know we have a couple of papers um, this European conference uh, on computer vision where this is used as an input detect humans and you can do tracking okay so are there any questions about this or the SIFT descriptor and detector yeah Yeah, so, so that's another, you know, another thing that while well, these humans can appear uh, at different scales, you know, if you take a picture from here, uh, you know, person who's standing will be this much size when, when I move closer, then the, again, will be a person, but there will be a different, you know, different size of the window. So that uh, um, deals with, again, this scale space issue that uh, and we are going to talk about that actually more detail about pyramid. So the idea will be that you will um, um, do this for different levels of pyramids of the image. Suppose you have an image say 256 by 256 and there the person is 128 by 64. 
um, but next time you zoom in and I'll zoom out, then person appears smaller. So instead of 120 by 64, it is about half of the size, which is 64 by 32, the smaller size. The next time zoom out, they'll be even smaller, which will be you know 32 by 16 or so on. So these are the different scaling vectors. So the way out of that will be that you do this learning at all these scales. So you take an image, you may build a pyramid, and um, do this thing for the original resolution, which is 128 by 64, then do the next one for the half the resolution, next one half the resolution. And given an image, you don't know which scale the person appeared. So you search through all these scales and find where is the best match, and that's where it is. So that brings in another dimension, another parameter that what should be the scale where the person appears. So that way you will be able to recognize, detect people at different, you know, any size they appear. Okay? Any other question? Okay, so no question.